Now we have uh, coming to talk to us about the mineral policy in Estonia, uh, Markus Raha from the um, Ministry of Economics. Please. My name is uh, easier to pronounce, Raha, Raha, yeah. yeah. By the way, it means happiness in Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> I put my stopper as well here. So, good afternoon, everybody, dear guests, friends, colleagues from here and there. This is my uh, presentation, Mineral Policy of Estonia, and... Um, I'm working in the Department of Mineral Resources in Ministry. We have s same name department also in, in survey. Is correct, Silly? Yeah. Ah. Okay, let's start. Oh. Which one? Ah, sorry. My bad. Okay, content. Oops, it looks, it looks like uh, first page of grammar textbook, past, present, future, but I'm not going to talk about <laughs> geological past, it's, uh, it's just uh, last, last five but very important years, and Ene in her presentation also mentions, mentioned those dates. So, major recent events, mm, June 2017, our region of our parliament approved those uh, general principles of Earth's crust policy until 2050. Uh, but half a year later, uh, 1st of January 2018, uh, the survey was re-established. Before that was a state-owned company, Estonian uh, Geologic, Geological Center, which has uh, had to earn money and got about half, half funding came from, from the state. And um, June 2020, uh, our ministry uh, actually read description of the uh, area of government of uh, our ministries, uh, Mineral uh, the Minister of Economic Affairs and Communication uh, was amended and, and included the area of mineral resources and also activities, corresponding activities. And uh, just from last year, uh, February 2021, uh, the Ministry has a new Department of Mineral Resources, just three of us working, all are here. Me, Ene and Kaur, Kaur is working in, in, in Saarema, remote, remote work. And uh, Timo, became a deputy secretary general for energy and mineral resources before uh, he was just deputy secretary general for energy ah, my bad. okay i have to read this sentence because uh, this is uh, from from the principles because we had a lot of brainstorm i was also involved uh, to just to compose this sentence and it took us i don't know half year <laughs> Earth crust and natural resources found rare are explored and used in, in a way which creates as much value for Estonia as possible. At the same time, considering the environmental, social, economic, geological and security, aspect, security aspects of these activities. And uh, of course, earth crust uh, in Estonia as well contains several resources uh, with a considerable economic potential and as a state, as, as every state, we, 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 we have to know what we have here, inside, in, in the earth crust. So, just a quick reminder, uh, especially to our Finnish friends, what we have here. Uh, as also in, 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 in mentioned that we have oil shale, uh, construction minerals or aggregates like lime and tolstone, sand and gravel also. What we like most now uh, is phosphorite, uh, as well peat, clay, sea and lake mud. Also, uh, we call it uh, resources for future. It's a rare earth. And uh, our rare earth uh, contains in phosphorite. Also in, in, in uh, black shale as well. And also iron, other metal, or black shale with vanadium, molybdenum, uranium. 
and uh, glauconite, uh, glauconite sandstone. So, where we are now? Some principles. What it, it varies uh, from country to country. But in Estonia, all bedrock mineral resources belongs to the state. That means everything what is under the Quaternary sediments belongs to the state. But uh, what concerns Quaternary uh, sediments, it's depend now. Uh, if it's private land, those Quaternary sediments uh, belongs to the uh, landowner. But if, uh, if it's state land, it belongs to the state. And, and um, bedrock means is rock created uh, in a pre-glacial period. So, and uh, the use of mineral resources is aimed at promoting the economic uh, growth of the state uh, while compensating for environmental impacts. In Estonia, <coughs> so the scope of mineral resources or area of mineral resources or earth crust is divided between two ministries. It's the uh, environmental minister, ministry and, and uh, our ministry. And uh, of course, the, the area of uh, Nature protection is, is towards the uh, environmental ministry and uh, we, are, we are looking for economic side of, of the story. So, and um, the main responsibility, responsible authority for exploring and mining permitting is environmental board. The environmental board is uh, government authority on the environmental ministry. The Commission of Mineral Resources is like advising body I am uh, chairman of this commission. Uh, the fee for the right to extract mineral resource resources is paid for the extraction or use of state-owned mineral resources. I'm not sure, about it, but uh, I, 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 I ask later, but how about uh, in Finland? And I, I know that uh, you want also introduce those, those resource taxes or fees. At least uh, I was told last year by Rick Altonen. Uh, and, uh, and the rates through fees established by regulation of the government and set per ton or per cubic meter. For example, the cubic meter of limestone, uh, you have to pay mm, about 2.54, I guess this year, uh, euros per cubic meter. And uh, those fees are divided between, between state and, uh, and uh, local authority or municipality. And uh, it's also var various. Uh, for example, from, from uh, sand, uh, mining sand, you get uh, the local uh, government uh, receives about 80% of the, uh, those fees and 20 goes to the state. But for limestone, it's uh, almost opposite, uh, 24 goes to the goes to the local authority and just rest, the more goes to the state. So we have some, <laughs> we have some laws, like everybody has laws. Uh, main law is uh, Earth Crust Act, then uh, General Part of Environmental Code Act, Environmental Charges Act, Nature Conservation Act, Building Code, Planning Act, those acts, uh, uh, our acts concerns uh, earth crust or mineral resources. Some more acts, but, uh, but those are main acts. Uh, and uh, Earth Crust Act regulates investigation, exploration and extraction. It's the most important thing. Also reclamation requirements. And uh, also protection of the earth crust and uh, liability for violation of, uh, of the requirements, uh, etc. Uh, what we do in ministry, uh, I mean Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communication, um, the area of our government is uh, analytics and research. For example, we have to focus uh, the need for mineral resources, assess uh, socio-economic impact on of mineral resources, conducting, coordinating, and funding of state-run researches, so, and collection, interpretation, and systematization of geological information, geological mapping, etc. 
and they will imp implement uh, uh, rules policies, uh, risk policies uh, in, in our ministry. We coordinate of exploration and use of mineral resources and we direct the uh, reactivities of uh, geological survey, what is uh, 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 government author authority under the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communication. We participate in legislation concerning the earth crust. Responsible Ministry of Rules legislation is uh, Ministry of Environmental. We coordinate plans, exploration permits and, and mining permits. They ask from us uh, state interest, for example, if uh, there is some, some uh, negative attitude from, uh, uh, from local authorities. Uh, we manage, uh, we, uh, we, we actually we calculate the oil sale and peat resource fees uh, quarterly. We particip participate in assessment of the environmental impact and efficiency of, of the use of earth crust. In focus at the moment, uh, we have um, many construction uh, projects uh, going on, especially, for example, you, uh, you, you all know about uh, this is Rail Baltic. A lot of, uh, lot of aggregates, uh, especially sand, for this project needed. Also construction of uh, highways, four line highways. And um, uh, sustainable use of building mineral resources and deposit uh, necessary uh, for those construction. We estimate them, we ask, uh, for example, Rail Baltic, how much do you need? They give us the figures. Uh, we develop a uh, concession uh, mechanism for future mineral resources, concession procedure or mechanism. We finance and uh, conduct research on existing and future mineral resources and also geothermal. Uh, Lauri, Lauri and jo uh, Johannes will speak uh, later about uh, this, this one project for future uh, mineral resources. And we promote uh, the use of mineral resources. We do international cooperation especially now, especially, especially those uh, two crises. First came, of course, energy crisis, and then followed up by, followed by uh, Russian aggression, and uh, this is what is going on you now in uh, international level in Europe. They are uh, ad hoc meetings, ad hoc meetings, and ad hoc meetings. We encourage entrepreneurship and innovation in the sector. So, our small but very brave department. Uh, the scope of um, mineral resources in the ministry is managed and regulated by our department of mineral resources. And uh, among other things, we are responsible for construction aggregates and other mineral resources, future mineral resources, reputation building, uh, actually, we, we tried to implement one um, paper, uh, paper um, uh, between ministry, uh, local authorities, uh, authorities and, and uh, mining companies. It's a paper called uh, Good Mining Agreement, but uh, I'm not sure, sure what will happen with this paper, but because uh, very different opinions. And... Um, also social responsibility associated with the use of mineral resources. Key points to remember. With a green transition, uh, the demand of, the demand of uh, rare, rare earth is growing and uh, rare earths and uh, also phosphorus are critical raw materials what uh, we think we have here. And uh, this sentence, Estonia has one, one of the largest phosphorite deposits in Europe. Before, maybe before today, uh, I had this sentence like Estonia has. 
the largest deposit, <laughs> phosphorate deposit in Europe. But I'm not sure now because uh, our Nordic friends are <laughs> doing good job. And uh, we'll see who has the biggest one. <laughs> so Estonian phosphorite as a raw material uh, is for fertilizers, also contains uh, rare earth. Uh, research into, into distribution and uh, finding the best technologies for uh, separation is currently being carried out and uh, uh, you will hear about this later. As I said before, uh, we are mapping the most suitable concession models for Estonia. Uh, we have several. We, we actually we ordered one research from uh, from Sweden about uh, concession, and uh, now we are we are thinking uh, how we we are going to implement this. Uh, uh, David, it's for you. The most important rare earth processing plant in Europe is in Estonia. <laughs> you heard, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, some some word, good words about the geological survey of Estonia. Uh, they, they probably they will s speak for themselves, but what they are doing it's just it's just short overview. And conducting geological mapping, geological is, is investigate, investigation and ex explore, exploration, and maintenance of geological sample material. We were yesterday in Ar Arbaver Center, and development of geological data banks, and ensuring uh, availability of geological information. New, new thing is uh, uh, geothermal energy research. Becca is involved in this. Yeah. Uh, advising uh, governmental authorities and uh, informing the public about the Hearst Crust. Uh, they have done uh, nice short movies uh, about phosphorite and etc. on the web, we, uh, web survey webs website. You can find those clips. Okay. As every, everywhere, we, we face some problems. The main problem is here as well, is uh, confrontation between the need of extract mineral resources and the anti-mining attitude. As I heard the Simon, Simon presentation, I was thinking, wow, so many mines we need, and, and but nimbini minimi, where we get, uh, can get uh, those minerals we need for greens, a green transition. Also, landscape protection areas of local importance, uh, which often do not have the necessary justification for nature protection, and have been used uh, to control mining. Uh, the extraction of mineral resources declared to be a national importance is practically decided by the local government. Uh, some local governments are like more friendly uh, towards um, mining or mines or even geological exploration, but some, some local governments, they even oppose the geological exploration because they say that if you exp ex today you explore, tomorrow you mine. But uh, for us, it's not directly relate, uh, not related uh, exploration and, and mining because exploration gives us also just geological information. And uh, of course, it's historical fears uh, related with phosphorite. And that's it's from Soviet times. Winds of change, you know, you know this Scorpion song. <laughs> and um, what, what is going to happen? I have a question marks here because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, minor cha changes in the current Earth Crust Act, this act at the moment is enforced about four years. But we face already problems in, in exploration and, and, and some other problems. And um, that's why several stakeholders, like ministry or uh, survey, uh, they made proposals to this, uh, to, this uh, to just change this current law. 
and uh, and uh, Rose proposals is now overviewed in in Ministry of Environmental Environment, and we'll see. Hopefully this year uh, they can amend this. And uh, the new changes, probably we need a new uh, new Earth Crust Act soon, but from which year, I'm not sure, after two years, three years. So one very important thing to us is also the concession procedure for future mineral resources, as I told before. And also re review the system of environmental charges. Uh, the environmental charges, this current, current act or law uh, will uh, finish, I guess, 2025. It's, uh, anyway, we need, uh, we need uh, no uh, new law. And uh, because there are many many aspects uh, what uh, what we don't agree in this or in this in in those environmental charges especially extract uh, mineral res resources uh, fees for extracting mineral resources for example as i told before uh, dividing uh, how they divide between um, between state and local government we see that local government should get more Person, especially from the from alignment to, uh, dollar stone, as I told before, it, it's just 24 percent, and uh, maybe it's uh, one reason uh, reason why they don't like mines. They get uh, less money, little money, and uh, also um, what is a new uh, in in our uh, bright future is a thematic spatial planning of future aggregates mining sites. It's starting from Harju County. And uh, ideally, this thematic, it's also in, in responsible ministries, uh, environmental ministry, and uh, now also uh, Ministry of Finance. And uh, the idea is that uh, after this uh, spatial planning, all the local governments and, and, uh, and state uh, agree, uh, agree with uh, with um, uh, where the companies can explore and mine, and where not. And also modernization of reclamation system. By the way, one now one now one now company, mining company, has a, has a mine in South Estonia, Tolo Tolo mine, and. Uh, the future of this mine will be vineyard. I have been in Finland in one mine, where this is a golf course, but uh, this one will be my vineyard. And it's just very simplif simplified, uh, simplified slide or or scheme showing uh, how the, th the the responsibility in mineral resources is divided between uh, two ministries. And uh, both ministries has a corresponding uh, department, uh, Minister of Environment has Department of Environment Technology, and we have Department of uh, Mineral Resources. We cooperate with each other, uh, we meet each, with each other very, very, very often. So, actually, as I was told that I don't have time anymore. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marcos. Questions? It was, I know, it was boring. It was uh, about law and policy. It's always boring. And, and, and uh, soon we have uh, very nice presentations, colorful. Thank you. I'm going to step parallel from TTK. Um, I have a question related to geothermal energy. Basic question, who owns the heat of the ground in Estonia? <laughs> I don't know. Who owns? Who owns heat? Can somebody uh, help me? Who owns the heat? It's never we, we discussed this like this way. Who owns heat? Maybe it, it depends on in which land heat is. <laughs> because I, I don't, it's it's other topic. But for example, in Latvia, in in our, in our south country, for everything everything on in in the private land 
what is on the on the under the leg up to the core uh, is is uh, is a uh, is a landowner property. But I I am not sure heat. But how about air? Any other questions? But uh, I, 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 who owns the heat in Finland? Yeah, that's a good question because that's a question which is on the table at the moment. Ah. Because when you are utilizing heat, heat does not uh, follow these uh, borders made by man. So, so it's a it's a question which is on the table, and, and I've heard uh, three different different answers, and there was everyone who gave the answer said that he's right. <laughs> so, so I think we have to, in the ultimate, we have to go to the court and solve it. But, but yeah, it's a good question. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Marcos.